Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one, 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 one. Namaste and welcome to N5D Radio, coming to you from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Sarasota, Florida, every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and 12 a.m. midnight in the U.K. I'm your host, Greg Prescott from N5D.com, and for the next two hours, we're going to be raising the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe. Tonight... Astrologer Jim Delacoli, also known as Panther Jim 1995 on YouTube, will be returning as our guest, and he'll be taking your calls. But we would like to ask once again that you keep your calls focused on astrology questions instead of personal horoscopes so we can make this a learning experience for all of us. And next week, we're going to be talking about the seven ways our children are being brainwashed. And just a quick reminder, Michelle Walling and I collaborated on an article entitled The Future of Education, a school you would want to attend. You'll definitely want to attend this school. And this truly is a school you want to go to. Imagine getting credits for learning about dream analysis, sacred geometry, or how to contact UFOs. Can you imagine learning about the cosmic and universal sciences or about the true origins of mankind? If you answered yes to any of these, then you'll definitely want to check this out tomorrow. And that will be posted on n5d.com. And for those listening on YouTube, you can simply click the link in the More Info section of this video. So, without further ado, I'd like everyone to give a warm N5D welcome to my new co-host coming to you from San Diego, California, psychic medium Sherry Elise. Hi, Sherry. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Greg, how are you? Outstanding. Sherry and I actually have known each other probably since uh, 2009 or so. This is such an easy transition, although you have some pretty big shoes to fill with Kendra, not to say that she has big feet or anything. but <laughs> So, Sherry, why don't you uh, tell us a little about yourself? Oh, thanks. Well, I'm definitely very, very excited to start the shows with Greg. And, uh, you know, we've been friends for a few years now. I was, okay, I was born in the San Fernando Valley in California. And then I was raised in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, home of the spring break. Then I met, married, and divorced my Brazilian husband, with which I have two children, a boy and a girl. And on my way walking down the aisle to collect my doctorate of law degree, I um, was nine months pregnant, and I so fell in love with her and being a mother that I put off my whole career, and by the time I was interested in pursuing it again, um, my and my heart was in the right place for it, I saw sovereignty law, which is what's similar to what Kate of Gaia or Kate Renee is doing in court. And it would be to help people to declare their sovereignty as beings. And so that's something I'm interested in finally in uh, maybe practicing law at this point again to do sovereignty law. For now, I work as an accountant as well as a psychic medium. And I see, hear, and feel all of consciousness, both in this dimension and others. I hear other beings speaking as if they are sitting right next to me. All communication is telepathic, but I can see in a flash, almost like a picture, or sometimes I can even see them sitting there, generally who's speaking to me. And my goals are to make this a better world for all sentient beings, and I especially have a huge cause for the betterment of our children. And that's about me. And hopefully people will get a chance to know me better and my personality and um, as we go on to know more about me and um, what type of person I am when I'm not so nervous. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You did wonderfully right there. And I'll tell you what, Sherry. This is my 29th show on Inside D Radio, and I still get the butterflies in my stomach before going on air. This is like 
an N5D family reunion with one of our most frequent guests, Jim Delacoli, returning to N5D Radio. But also, it's a reunion for all of our N5D family who are listening tonight. And speaking of Jim, Sherry, I see that Jim is in the queue. So would you like to uh, tell us a little about him? Well, Jim is making his fourth appearance on N5D Radio as astrologer Jim Delacoli, also known as Panther Jim, 1995 on YouTube. He has returned to offer his insights on current and upcoming world events and uses his experience and knowledge of astrology to explain the synchronistic relationship between the heavenly bodies, our planet, and humanity. Jim started his 12-year journey in astrology in 2001 after receiving a natal chart reading, which turned him from skeptic into a researcher. And now he's a professional full-service astrologer. You can, of course, find Jim on his website, xpie2012.com, and that's y, sorry if it X, y, p, i, e, dot, 2012.com. Welcome back to N5D Radio, Jim. Thank you. You did a wonderful job, and uh, you welcome yourself. I'm uh, glad to be back, and Greg's Greg's been easy to uh, chat with, and you sound like you're going to be fun and easy as well, so I'm looking forward to tonight. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, fun and easy has always been my description. (laughs) Easy in a good way now. (laughs) Well, you know, Jim and I chatted last week, um, and it's, uh, we must have chatted for about an hour, and it was just over so many little things, and it's so easy to talk with Jim. Jim and I are both Libras, and we, we have both had the same Pluto and Virgo, and so, you know, you'll, you'll get along, if you get along great with me, Sherry, you'll get along great with Jim, I guarantee it. <laughs> well, that's awesome. <laughs> uh-huh. So, uh, Jim, let's just start things out, just so maybe some of the people listening haven't heard the previous shows. How did you mm-hmm. get involved with astrology? Um, raised raised Catholic and uh, you know was told that it was not something we could deal with. You 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 don't look in the future. You you know do kind of as you're told. Do as as the religion kind of says or guides you, and and um, just put your effort forth. I uh, in 2001 came to a point. I was 35, 36, which is a huge turning point in all of our lives, and I wasn't living. I was just existing, and uh, I. Uh, had a chart reading, um, as Sherry was saying, and it really um, hit my soul, hit my inner voice, my guidance system, and it just kept hitting it. She just kept everything she was talking about in time frames of, you know, my past and, uh, you know, what had happened and how I got to that day uh, when I actually met her. It 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 just it just rang so true, and I said, this is so in in rhythm with who I am. I can't avoid or I can't. Um, just push this aside. I've got to address it. And uh, once I got into it, Greg, the cycles of life, uh, the cycles of nature, and just getting in rhythm with nature um, just means so much to all of us. And it just made me more and more uh, realize that there's a plan, there's a way, and there's a guidance system that if we'd all just open to our own sources and our own avenues of uh, finding things out and thinking for ourselves and becoming responsible, uh, we can come that energy that we truly um planned as you know as we were entering the planet so so what astrologers did you learn from and who inspires you i uh there's a local lady here uh, i'm in i'm in carolinas and a local lady really got me started and she um followed the saturn principle and um her name was gabrielle hardman she was she's really good if you're in the southeast if, if she still is taking charts i'm not sure but I followed Grant Louie and um, Debbie Kempton Smith um, a lot because I felt like they put their own, like what they learned, I felt like they put their own emphasis on there versus uh, everybody, most of the other astrologers out there kind of repeat what they've read or repeat what they've learned. I felt like those two really put their emphasis uh, as well as what they've learned. And then they, you know, they came to a, 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 be, a greater conclusion, I guess, is, is what I'd say, um, with what they learned. So, very good in the books and uh, you know the the information they put out to help. And then it helped me realize that hey, I, I need to put my stamp on this too. I'm not here just to repeat what everybody said. I'm not a parrot. I need to put my stamp on things. So, um, and that's what I've done, and that's what I continue to try to do. Mm-hmm. Well, we recently had a uh, Cardinal Grand Cross. What did that mean to us? 
uh, anytime we have planets in uh, a cardinal sign, the cardinal signs there's four of them uh, in um, in the in anyone's natal charter in the universe, and they're, they're the beginning of a quadrant. And the cardinal signs means we must take action. You can't avoid. You can't uh, turn the other way. You can't suppress. You can't hide. It's got to be dealt with. And, and when we had this, uh, this cross has happened a few times over the last couple of years. Uh, Pluto's been in Capricorn. You and I talked about that a lot, Greg, where the revolution was coming. That started in 08. Pluto's a slow-moving planet, so it's going to be there till 2024. Um, and it's got phases that it goes through as it's, it, it's transiting through Pluto. I mean, through Capricorn. Uranus in 2011 went into um, Aries, and Uranus is the planet of the invention or the outside of the box thinker, or you know, the sudden awakening. Um, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It's we must take charge. Um, and then we've had then for the last year we've had Jupiter in Cancer, and that's been about um, us, our, our roots. Who are we? Uh, it also rules. Cancer rules food, um, so we're seeing the issues and what's we're really seeing the uprising. People are not taking this anymore of all the chemicals and all the the additives and all the ingredients that aren't listed that are able to be put in food. People have really this last year really just jumped on that, and I think that's Jupiter and, and Cancer really making you know bringing expanding the awareness there. And, and of course we've had uh, the eclipses now have gone into Libra, the last of the cardinal signs, and we've had Mars there for a while. Um, so, you know, Mars has decided to go retrograde in Libra, so we have all four cardinal signs that have been activated by planets, and this is, uh, there's no hiding, it's, it's, you're, you're, you as an individual, your home, your relationships, and then your career, all four of the cardinal signs are being, um, dealt with, and you have to step up, and, and, you know, that's why you see the chaos that we're seeing. Jim, there are different schools of astrology, which ones have you studied, and which ones do you use the most, and why? I do the Western and Placidus. I found that uh, the Placidus allows uh, for uh, the angle uh, from which the individual is actually born uh, as far as the distance from the equator. So there's less daylight or more daylight depending on the uh, summer or, or spring or fall or, or winter baby born. Uh, and it, it helps. It's more accurate for me in my predictions when I, you know, when a planet crosses a house for an individual, I can gear them up for, you know, getting ready to deal with that house. Uh, I feel like the Placidus does the best at the predicting or timing of events or energies that they're getting ready to encounter, um, and that's that's personal. Please don't take that as I'm, you know, saying that any other form of astrology is is uh, not as effective. It, that one works for me. And again, if everybody would find what what works for them and use it and really you know take it to uh, as far as they can, I think that we'd all find that um, we'd all find our talents, I guess, along the way. You know, on a previous show, we were talking about all the uh, Pluto in whatever, like Pluto, we're the Pluto in Virgo generation. There's the yes. Pluto in Leos and so on and so forth. And that was fascinating. I think we could do a whole show on that. Honestly, that would be a great idea. But uh, can you yes. tell us what the importance of retrograde planets on a birth chart would, would be? I, I know that for myself, I don't have any. I'm, I'm one of the fortunate ones that don't have any, but most people have probably two, three, four retrograde planets on a birth chart. So can you explain a little about that? Yeah, retrograde, you know, the RE is what I what I tell people when they come see me is get a chance to redo or, or uh, you know, a, a chance to um, – it slows the planet down, so it's almost like a retake. And, and so you get to observe the energy or experience the energy in a slowed-down state. Um, because it was a lesson that maybe tripped you last life. And because it's retrograde, uh, it's not going to, you don't, you're not going to breeze through maybe the lessons or the energies that the planet uh, d helps define um, in, in whatever house or sign that it falls in. But what you can do is say, wait a minute, I got my life to really figure this out and give yourself that space and really find, you know, uh, find the energies of that planet. Uh, no matter what it is, and, and really figure it out, and then realize that hey, I can I can learn some of my most valuable lessons through the house, whatever planet the 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 uh, fell in whichever house, um, and then through the energy of that planet. So it, it could be a tremendous opportunity for one to uh, uh, you know uh, advance evolutionary wise, um, where maybe most others would just skip over or maybe not make a big deal, you, you must make a big deal of it and you must address it uh, in this life. 
you know, a lot of people will look at those uh, retrograde planets and say, oh, my God, I got this mess, and oh, my, oh poor, poor me. But you know what? People should look at that as an opportunity to uh, yes. further your spiritual progression. Yes, because I think that's a deep soul lesson that uh, the retrograde says you've missed this a few lifetimes, so take your time here. You can get it. And it's really the universe saying, I believe in you. It's just you stepping back and going, hey, let me let me take grasp of this and really come to a complete understanding. Mm-hmm. So out of curiosity, what uh, planets are retrograde on your birth chart? <laughs> I have Saturn oh, retrograde in the first house. And that, <laughs> yeah, Sorry, Helene. Absolutely. I know Helene's listening right now. She has Mercury in retrograde on her, on her oh, birth no. chart. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, no. that's Yeah, that one can be dubious there, absolutely. Um, yeah. Per- Saturn will Mercury out. retrograde. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, that's definitely tough. I, um, I have Saturn and um, – sorry, that's it uh, in my chart for retrograde, so I got lucky. Um, I was trying to look at something else up, up for something else. So, um, But you know, any planet uh, that you have retrograde, you want to really study that planet um and really figure out what that lesson can be that you missed and then how what you can learn and, and then move along with that so mm-hmm. i'm just recalling as far as i don't i'm thinking if i can recall what planets i have in retrograde i just know that i have i think five planets like in the eighth house i think it's like wow. the house of hell whatever it is i think i have all <laughs> of these planets in it <laughs> that's all yeah, that's, i remember <laughs> that's uh, a lot of planets in the eighth house is a lot of um like destruction, um, death for rebirth, and and you're really um, the evolution in this this life is uh, extreme, and you deal with things uh, in that manner until of course you age and then you start handling a, a slight bit better. But that's you know a lot of endings for beginnings in one's life. So you, you hopefully you've seen that and you've been able to start figuring that out I, uh, because that that's a that's a very powerful house, a powerful individual as well. Oh, cool. I mean, hey, there's been a bonus for that. At least, you know, at least I have some power out of it because it definitely has been difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you draw powerful power to you energetically, so it's either powerful people or events or uh, those things. Just You know, you're, you're, just, you're just drawing those this life because you're learning uh, that lesson. I guess that's one of my questions also is that, you know, do people, you know, seeing if we believe that people choose to come in at a certain point, they plan their lives ahead, they choose to come in at a certain point, do they choose to be in a certain, um, you know, astrological pro- profile? Do they, you know, choose to come in, let's say, as an Aries or a Scorpio so that they have those type of characteristics to deal with what they're supposed to deal with in this life? Yes, yes. Uh, you put that very eloquently too, because that uh, that really uh, is probably one of the biggest things that when someone takes starts learning astrology, they they just keep proving that more and more. It's like, oh, now I see why that individual chose uh, you know Mars and Cancer or Pluto and Capricorn, or uh, you start seeing that, and then you start seeing the generational uh, how the you know each generation kind of. Um, takes what the generation prior uh, has done and accomplished and moves it forward by the slower moving planets because they had, you know, those planets keep every all the planets keep moving, but the pace is is um, the only thing that's that is different between them and um, so each generation kind of has to take what the generation before worked on, messed up, you know, fixed, uh, you know, and either and improve it or or destroy it to, um, you know, rebuild it so to speak. Wow, that's interesting because I, I definitely was, you know, I, I definitely thought that that would, you know, choosing what type of characteristics, both positive and negative, of an astrological sign, you know, could help you to achieve what you wanted to achieve in this in this life for sure. Yes, and I then find it interesting that um, that all of us also are Pluto in Virgo, um, and there's a lot of listeners out there. Jim, maybe you could recap quickly what that that generation is. Yeah, the Pluto and Virgo generation, um, early to, to late 60s, uh, I think even early into 1970, um, and they 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 all came to bring the Virgo lesson, which is you must take care of the body, you must uh, you know uh, seek perfection, and and you know as a whole generation, we're all looking to wait a minute, how can we eat better? How can you know um, the generation before us said, hey, we got to grow better crops, we got to 
feed the planet. It's growing, and our generation's like, all right, wait a minute, we've done that. Now, uh, what's the outcome? Where did we, you know, where did we go too far? What, what have we messed up? And so we're working on purifying the body again, finding food, figuring ways out to um, feed the planet with all these people. But also, uh, when you look at Virgo, because it, does, it rules health, it also rules um, kind of working together and finding ways to where we all can benefit versus just the few. And so we're really trying to seek perfection, yes, one, but I think seeking we're seeking truth as well. And I think that's a huge uh, thing that's happening right now with the people our age, Greg, who are in their you know, early 40s to almost 50, early 50s, and we're, we're working on that right now. So, mm-hmm. Well, you know, we're, we're following the, the Pluto and Leo generation, and mm-hmm. I, I can't say enough good things about them because if, if it wasn't for them, I don't think N5D would exist right now. Absolutely. <laughs> um, they they made they took and made I think you know America I think probably the great country that it was I think the world as well. Um, they, they they put a lot of hard work and then remember the firepower of the Leo. Uh, you're going to improve. You got to make it better. Um, and then we got to perfect what they've done. And so that's really what our job is. Mm-hmm. For those people listening, they're they're the group I think from I think it was somewhere from the 1930s mid-1930s to about 1957 or so. If you were born in that era, then you're part of the Pluto and Leo generation. Now, I've got a bunch of articles on N5D.com about each one of these Pluto in generations, so you can check that out as well. But I, I, give my, I tip my hat off to these, these people that, because they're the ones, you know, people look at them and laugh at them being the hippies and, you know, all these freaks and stuff, but they were the ones that really dared to be different. They stepped outside yeah. of the box in such a radical way. Unfortunately, they, they didn't have the organizational structure to follow through on whatever it was that they were trying to achieve, and that's – they kind of passed the, the, the torch on to us, and that's where we take it, and we run with it. Right. That's exactly right. I um, I was looking for my actual Pluto dates. I didn't want to uh, mm-hmm. get the listeners off by me giving the wrong dates. That's why I was being a little vague, but I can't find it. But you, it was a, I think it was the late 30s into the 50s, and then uh, Pluto went in Virgo, late 50s, mm-hmm. early 60s into the 70s. So. Right, right. Now, there's one thing I didn't ask you, too. Sometimes, for example, I, I don't have the, the, the chart in front of me either, but – I think Pluto and Scorpio, there might be like two or three different dates for that. Yeah, Pluto, from our perspective, would like it'll enter a sign, and then because it moves so slow, it'll go to maybe one or two degrees of, say, it got into Scorpio one or two degrees, and then it um, went retrograde and went back into Libra. So there, you know, it may enter a certain year, and then you may see it go back for like six months into the previous sign, and then come back into Scorpio and stay there for good. Um, and so that's what you know. We must be uh, aware of that as well, because that does make a difference when the planet transits into a sign. It starts revealing, all right, here's what we're getting ready to deal with. Here's what's coming. And then when it goes retrograde, you got to finish up maybe what wasn't completed, um, you know, in the previous sign. So uh, it does go back retrograde, and that's why we see those uh, missing uh, time periods. Well, let's use that as an example, Don. For okay, okay, so say somebody's born in the general years of the Pluto and Scorpio, but yet they're actually Pluto and Libra because of the uh, retrograde, yeah. would they share any of the similar qualities of those who were born Pluto and Scorpio? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's a, you know, we call that like a, anytime a planet shows up late in one's chart by degrees, 28, 29, um, we call that kind of the last chance degrees there. And uh, what mm-hmm. they're trying to do is finish what the what was uh, the lesson to be learned in Libra. But they're also uh, half, you know, half half of the foots, you know, one's foot's there, and the other half other foot's in the uh, sign of Scorpio, to where they know they must move forward. And so they're almost taking on double the uh, the work, so to speak. Uh, and they don't want to go into Scorpio until they finish the or completed the the Libra work. So it's it's a lot of. Um, uh, effort put forth then from that, you know, dealing with the the soul. Pluto uh, does rule the soul, so a lot of effort has to be put forth because you're dealing with two signs then, um, and then you got to add to, uh, of course, one's an angel chart. Where, what house it fell in? So then you're putting, all right, where's it happening? And then how the energy going to deal? Um, and, and so it's pretty interesting. Uh, the individual's life is uh, uh, pretty hectic, I'd say. So. 
you know, earlier uh, we were just kind of mentioning on, on people's uh, retrograde planets, you know, how some people might have a ret Mercury retrograde. But in general, during a Mercury retrograde, what should people avoid? Yeah, everybody, uh, they're, they're quick to say don't sign contracts. And, you know, you, you try not to want to uh, complete anything um, in a retrograde Mercury unless you have completely done the homework all the way up to and then, you know, you're at the final stages. You've dotted the the I's and crossed the T's, and then you're you know it's ready. You've had this thing is ready to complete, but something may have stirred it up, and then you had to do it in retrograde Mercury. We try to avoid anything of the final signing there. Sometimes you can't avoid that, and th and that's when I just caution the individual to just make sure you do your homework because something will pop up as Mercury uh, is the ruler of communication, um, and it rules the signs of Gemini and Virgo, and Gemini is about I got to learn, I got to figure this out, I want to find out. So you're constantly uh, spending lots of energy on uh, understanding the physical plane, and then Virgo is the perfecting sign. So you, you want to, um, you know, you want to make sure it is not only good but it is right and, and it, you know it's complete. So whenever Mercury's retrograde, those things get uh, get altered, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Now, we were chatting on the phone last week about compatible and incompatible signs in a relationship. Can you talk a little about this along with how it is possible for incompatible signs to have a great relationship? Absolutely. Um, and that's a great question because I get uh, – I don't know. I, I consider a lot of society today is uh, – because we have so much information like right at our fingertips, we can go to the Internet and you can – Go to Twitter, or, you know, uh, Google, or, or whatever, and find whatever you're looking for. Um, I consider this generation, you know, the the, the generation that wants to uh, quickly get the answer and move on, and um, get the right relationship, move on. You know, I, the, a lot of the under or under the table or behind the scenes work that that makes us human and, and brings uh, life its full the full happiness of life to us is about um, truly seeing things um, and enjoying them and just allowing them to be and, and then us putting our energy into that. And, and so a lot of people I, that come to me say, well, I, you know, I'm an air sign and I don't want to marry a water sign. Or, you know, I, and I'm like, just hold on a minute because there's so many more factors into um, one's chart. If uh, Greg, if you were born with moon square sun, moon being your past and, and sun being where you're trying to go, you're going to have complications just in how you operate. You're, you know, you're going to be ever changing, um, be complicated because that's just a makeup that your last life or last lives that kind of, uh, you know, cause you to have to be that way to operate. And so, just that in itself is going to make t relationships tough. You know, um, so I try to remind people that it's more than just your sun sign, and their sun sign. You want to know their moon sign. You want to know Venus, their ability to to love and their ability to be sensual and then Mars, that sexual side, and then Pluto, that power. You want, you want to know where all their planets are and you want to match up your your planets to theirs. And a lot of times what we find is uh, sun square sun, the individuals make it work because uh, they're both willing to put the effort forth because they see the value in the other individual and they know it's something that can help them. And, you know, they just use their instincts and, and they, they make that work and they don't, you know, a lot of times astrology uh, can teach an individual that what you think you need and what you think is best for you is is probably the exact opposite. And astrology helped me learn that, and I, I hopefully I help that with others when they come to see me. Well, you know by experience. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> you didn't mention and that it's part. Mine and <laughs> yeah, it's mine and others. I uh, uh, uh -huh. you uh, you know a great book by Rose Murray. Um, uh, when when planets promise love, I think is the name of it, and she uh, she talks about that. If your Venus uh, matches the, your partner's Mars, you know your sensual side and their sexual side are going to feed each other. If your Moon uh, is compatible to their Sun, where you've been is going to help where they're going. Um, and so you you know you, you'll start feeling you kind of know that you, you people you're just drawn to and it doesn't make sense. That's these other planets working outside of the Sun. Of uh, signs, or, or you know, the, wherever the sun fell by sign uh, in an individual's chart. So, I'm, you know, I'm probably the best example of that. As I married, a, my first marriage was a sun square sun, and uh, you know that can be very difficult, and it was. 
Uh, but what I learned from that was very valuable lessons to help in my second marriage and then learned that maybe I didn't know what I truly needed um, because I didn't follow my instincts all the way through, if that makes sense. I, I'm so glad that you told this to Greg because I'm actually single, and the first thing that he says is, what's their sign? Right, <laughs> and right. then I say it, and he goes, it's never going to work out. It's never going to work out. Just <laughs> give it up. And I was just like, God, that's so, you're such a generalization. That's not fair. And I'll say, but this guy's not the typical, you know, whatever. And he's like, it's just right. not going to work. You know it. And I'm just like, uh, <laughs> you're such a drag, Greg. You know, you just, you killed my vibe for this. <laughs> but so I'm so glad well, you told Greg that. So now he knows he's going to have to look up more information than that just somebody's son sign before he tells me to dump them. Well, no. <laughs> nice work, Greg. <laughs> I, um, well, now, Greg and I talked a little bit about this. I think the, the awareness, though, is to know, wait a minute here, we have a sun square sun. There's things that are going to be worked through. You know, to for the relationship to uh, mature and to you know hopefully have something that lasts over a long period of time. So, but I think you need to be aware of that initially. But then you want to go through the other planets and and you know start looking. How's my Venus to his Mars? How's my his Mars to my? I mean his Venus to my Mars and and so on. You want to just go through and just check the compatibilities. Is, is um, they show themselves. So, but yeah, it's more than just the sun sign. You know, I, I mean, I, I also, it's my experience also that, you know, a lot of people that I meet, because I'm very, I'm a very deeply spiritual person, and because I am psychic and empathic, is that I tend to, you know, see that some, a lot of people carry their soul's memory from one life to the next. Yes. So yes. even though they may be a specific sun sign in this life, they still are who they are as a soul, who they are forever. So yes. sometimes and I, 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 I mean, think a, astrology can be helpful. Yeah, and I think you want to look at where the moon and Pluto fell in their in their chart when they were born, because I think that gives a lot of um, what they've dealt with, who they are, where they've been, and what they know. I think that gives a lot of that. And maybe the sun sign then for that individual is to start seeing things from a, a, a broader perspective, and that's why they chose that sun sign to you know to illuminate um, an area that maybe has been uh, in the dark for them. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. I just, I just know personally that I've, I've um, been married twice, and they were both Aquarians within, you know, a day of each other. And um, the most, the most difficult sign that I was with was a Scorpio. I was going to ask you. Got a lot of water in it. <laughs> What's your sun sign? Oh, I do. Um, I'm in Aries. Okay. Okay. I'm in you Aries, know what your moon and sign is, so. By any chance? Oh, my gosh. You know, I wish I did. I really should know more about this, but I'm kind of like a Jill of all trades. I know a little bit about a, a lot of everything, but not so much about one thing in particular. But um, right. I definitely would be more in, interested in, in, in it, something I definitely have been interested in knowing about more. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I'm not so sorry. I don't know. I don't know what I am. <laughs> Jim, what would be the yeah. best relationship advice you could give someone regarding astrology? Huh, that's a good question. Let me think about that for a second here. Based on, you know, the, the people I've um, done charts for them and they found people and in, in my own life, Greg, I would tell people that find a moon sign that is going to be compatible to your sun sign. Um first do that first Mm -hmm. because when you do that there's a there's just an all-knowing that's um unspoken of you just realize that that person understands you um being in astrology the moon being uh, again all that you brought forth and that you can tap into the container it holds the emotions the 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 events you know the lessons uh, what you learned what you need to learn all that's there and the sun's where you're trying to go so they can help you so the moon sign is a good match to the sun sign that's very good and then and then i really think uh we need the sensual side we need the intimacy so i think you want to match mars and and venus and uh, up up then and then of course you know uh th- those planets match in your ascendant and and then the outer planets. So I think if you did that, if you got the moon and sun match and then Mars and Venus match, you're, you're connected to that person. You'll always remember them, and it'll always be, um, you know, it, it'll always be fondly, even if it doesn't work. You, you'll just, well, wow, I won't, I'll never forget that individual, you know. Okay, and, and conversely, 
what is it you want to look out for? What, what, what is it that, that would be like a huge warning sign saying, no, no, no? Yeah, uh, squares and oppositions in astrology are the worst. So you want to watch somebody, you know, Greg, we're Libras. We want to watch uh, moon and cancer and moon and Capricorn people. Um, <laughs> those signs square us, if that makes sense. And then uh, we also want to be careful. Uh, I think squares are the most work or most uh, can be the most de- potentially most detrimental. Um, and then oppositions are second. So then you want to watch a moon and Aries people. Um, then because of, uh, you know, where they've been opposite of where we're trying to go. So um, you, you want to see what squares and opposes uh, your, your uh, if, if, if you're looking at the moon signs, and see what squares and opposes your sun sign first. And same thing with Mars and Venus. does not work real well when Venus squares Mars or Mars squares Venus at all. Um, because, you know, it may be hot and, and heavy early on, but it doesn't make it, doesn't withstand the test of time. It's like, almost like it's against nature, so to speak. And, uh, you know, Jim, I a- actually have a question, and maybe this is, I'm sorry, it's probably, you know, a little bit skewed off, but um, I was wondering where, uh, when the original Zodiac came from. I mean, did it come from, you know, the time of the dinosaurs when they think that, you know, maybe Marduk it- Exploded and knocked everything all over the place, or you know, or is this more recent within, you know, more of a you know thousands of years? Yeah, the um, it's several thousand years old, and we can't. I have not found any uh, information that I I would um, say is legitimate. But what I will say is, you know, when the ancients, uh, the wise men, or the leaders of the tribe or the group would stay up through the night, and they noticed planets moving. Um, I don't know if alien technology got us to be aware of that or if we figured it out on our own. Uh, as you know, they, they noticed the sun moved through the sky, the moon moved, and uh, changed its uh, shape. That they realized that night gave them the information. So you know, the wise individuals or, the, or the, the elderly would stay up at night and follow the planets, and that's where they first started it. So it's really only the visible planets that were noticeable. Um, but, you know, back in the day, the, I live by a city, so we don't have very good um, night uh, vision with all the lights. You, if you get out somewhere out in the ocean or something, I mean, it's beautiful. And you see so much more um, that you can only imagine that they, they followed that and, and started. they just started documenting events. It was a pretty simple process. Mankind just tried to evolve, and they were like, all right, the moon's here. What happens? The moon's there. What happens? And they just started, you know, putting the events together and, and uh, it's basically a big data of, of history um, of what happens when certain planets go into certain signs, when certain planets square each other, when certain planets pose. And it's, it's a big database, and that's where we get our information to start with. And then as astrologers, we need to take it somewhere further, so we need to own the planets and kind of really almost have them within us and feel them so we can help uh, society and where, where we're headed. I just read something recently from Zachariah Sitchin who believed that you know, uh, millions and millions of years ago that the Anunnaki actually had named these planets after themselves, and they originated the Zodiac by putting, you know, their own names onto the planets and that they were the ones that created this. But this is like, you know, this is like the dinosaur times, according to, you know, what what he's saying. So I thought, I mm-hmm. thought it was, you know, I thought it was sort of a re- interesting what he, had to, what he had to say about it. He said that was... Um, that there was a former major planet between Mars and Jupiter exploded about 65 million years ago, and that it may have ended what ended the dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that that was called Marduk, the uh, Sumerian Nubiru, and that they're the ones that actually created the Zodiac, and this is 65 million years ago. But, but you know, who knows? That's sort of cause some conspiracy theory stuff. And, you know, I, well, common. you know, I... Every yeah, day. I read oh, all yeah. that. I read all that, and it's how do we prove? You know, it's just tough to prove or disprove. So, I don't dismiss any of that, and I, but I, I don't jump on it either. I just I read it, and I'm like, we'll get the answer. I, I feel like we're at the point where the answer is coming. We just got to get there. So, you know, the problem with society today is we can have something happen today, and you and Greg and I could all in the morning wake up and do research, and we go back to three different things that happened. Uh, because there's so many different uh, angles that the stories are being 
presented to us now, whether it's on you know mainstream media or the through the internet on Twitter, and you can, you know so we can have something happen with all the technology we have. We can it could happen yesterday. We could have three different scenarios, so to speak. Jim, I, I'm a uh, triple Libra. Is that a cursing? Is that a curse or a blessing? Or a cursing? <laughs> a cursed well, blessing. <laughs> curse? You know the. <laughs> You know, Greg, the, the the older I get being a Libra, I think it's uh, at times I think the curse overwhelms the blessing because it's the sign of the not self. So you're constantly weighing and uh, trying to figure out what what. Okay, I may like this, I'm drawn to it, but I don't I don't want to be selfish or I don't want to look, you know, like I'm uh, egotistical. And so you're constantly weighing what you think others would think, and a lot of energy gets spent then in that you know, the battle inside. And so uh, I think what Libras really need to figure out is I just got to stay in the middle. It's okay to sometimes be aggressive and selfish, and other times I can, you know, I'll, I'll let that Libra, let me consider the other side, let me understand and try to figure out through someone else. Uh, I, you know, I think Libra's sign is one of the toughest. It's not because I am that, but I just watch the Libra's battle in their lives. They do a lot of good. But a lot of times they don't get back um, maybe the same amount of energy or same type of energy that they put out. And so uh, that battle gets waged internally. I think they're, they're always trying to prove their worth or understand their worth, and a lot of times it's through others, and that can be extremely frustrating. So what's the lesson to be learned for people who are triple Libras, triple Scorpios or whatever? What's the yeah. lesson that they, they really need to get out of that? That any time that we do uh, have more than a, a one planet, or it's it's in a really tough, uh, uh, very important angle in the chart, um, and so you end up being double, triple, quadruple. I would add, just add, just figure. I'd read about that sign. I'd find everything I could find out about that sign, and I'd watch people that had that planets in that sign that prevalent. And uh, I think the lesson is that it's got to be overloaded to you so you can sort it out. You needed a lot of it. You know, you needed almost to the state of uh, confusion. Um, but in the end, it's it's like uh, if I you know if I had a triple Libra, Greg, I'd be like, all right, later in life I'll really sort this out. I can't. I don't want to be still fighting. You know, when I'm in my mid to late fifties, I want to have this thing figured out. And so, just take your time and understand that. Hey, I'm going to keep getting the lessons. I'm just going to keep being aware, and I'm going to keep figuring this out. So, um, they say Libra is about balance, but I say you're imbalanced most of your life, if that makes sense. You know, Libra, and that's a Libra talking, if that makes sense. Well, I found it interesting because when I was learning how to surf, I just picked it up so easily. I was able to ride in a bunch of waves mm-hmm. the first time. I even tried, so wow. I, I attribute that to being a Libra and and the balance thing. Yes, and not overthinking it. <laughs> yeah, but the problem I think that Libras get is they overthink it in their own time, if that makes sense. Like an event happens out the day, and then that night, if they just had a strange feeling, they try to overthink it. I think that's where Libras spend a lot of energy. It's maybe needless. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. Maybe that's what needs to be done. I want to remind our listeners that our phone lines are open right now. If you have any astrology questions for Jem, please call us at 646-716-8890. And please keep your questions related to astrology and not personal astrology questions. Go ahead, Sherry. Oh, I was just going to comment that I think overthinking is not reserved for any specific zodiac sign. <laughs> I think we can all have that issue for sure. Well, especially Virgo. Yeah. Yeah, we have well, we have a lot. We have a lot of. Uh, well, well, Greg know, and I have Pluto what, and Virgo, so we're going to do that. Uh huh. Well, you know what's funny about Greg and I is Greg and I both have a daughter with the exact same birthday, and we both have a father with the exact same birthday, born in the same town. Wow! And and Full you family. guys met in oh nine. Mm-hmm. I wow. think so, and Isn't we were weird? instantly friends. I I remember the very second we met, he was like, we met on Facebook, and he was like. Oh, you're a spiritual rocker. That's so cool because that's exactly what I am. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. And then I think like our first phone call, we might have been on the phone for four and a half hours. And it was like it was a second. And so it's, it's always been it's always been like that. So this is such this is such a pleasure for me to do this because, you know, Greg and I have had. Probably, I don't know, some of the most meaningful conversations that I've ever had with another human, for sure. So, Mm -hmm. um, no, I feel really, really happy to do this because we definitely, definitely the universe is coming in saying, pay attention to this person because they're supposed to be in your life. And if 
And if you don't recognize that, we're going to give you guys the same kid birthday. And we're going to give your fathers the same kid, you know, birthday. <laughs> Do you get it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, that thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, to me, to me, yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're part of my soul family, you know, and I've got a lot of soul family out there, but you're definitely part of my soul fa- family. Just like I was telling <laughs> my girlfriend, Michelle, about this one dream I had is where she, she was pushing this huge shopping cart, like the kind you see at Costco, except it was even bigger. And uh, my, my former co-host, Kendra Gilbert, and I were in the shopping cart. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was, kind of, it was kind of a strange dream. But Kendra and I were brother and sister, and, and Michelle was my mother in this dream. So it just goes to wow. show you about all this different soul family, how we do all seem to come together. And, Jim, there's no doubt in my mind that you're part of my soul family as well, brother. Oh, well, I, uh, I, feel, I felt connected to you from day one, so I've enjoyed it. And I, I would say that I've known you for many a lifetime, so absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I, what we're going to do is we're going to start taking a few phone calls now, and I see that area code 901 has been on hold for quite a while here, and I recognize that number. Uh, Lenise, are you there with us on N5D Radio? Hello? 901? We're going to put her on hold, but I definitely recognize that number, and we're going to jump to the next uh, area code. We have area code 561. You're live on N5D Radio. Can I get your name, please? Hello, this is Helene. Hi. Hi, Helene. Hi. <laughs> I recognize How that number, you? too. <laughs> oh, my God. This is a, first of all, this is an awesome show. Oh, I'm taking in Yay. everything. Jim, it's really all. It's, Jim, you're terrific. Well, thank and, you. Uh, uh, so I, I, this is what I want to know. Two, two things. You were talking about Mercury retrograde. Now, what about if somebody has Mercury retrograde? How are they affected when Mercury is retrograde? Yeah, I, I think the, uh, I think the uh, energies are heightened then, and then um, they need to be more aware because they came in with Mercury retrograde, and then when Mercury goes retrograde, they really want to say, all right, I, I need to see this thing through. I want to make sure everything I do... Um, I look beneath the surface, and, and you know, I, I've done all my homework, and I've done all the work. So, uh, you know, as this Mercury retrograde goes through, I, I have the, the least amount of frustration or, or issues that happen. Um, Mercury mm-hmm. retrograde is one of the frustrating ones because uh, you always want to, you know, you want to. Uh, it rules uh, communication, but it also rules tra- short distance travel and things. So it's a lot of, you know, a lot of. Uh, hurried up and do or you got to get things done and there's more you know you're planning and and you know scheduling and and so i think that's it's frustrating for a mercury uh, retrograde individual throughout their lives because it seems like they look at other pe- people fly through and they're always getting tripped up on just silly things so to have that uh at birth and then have it in in you know going on here on the planet they get the double whammy so to speak so interesting see i always thought of it as like born like with you know you have to be a shaker to mover and and do all these things because almost like you're accustomed to it mm-hmm. but that's that's a good i mean i i've always been interested in that and another thing you were talking a little bit about triple libras and triples so i was it was it was reminding me of this astrology show i heard with tom lesher and he was saying that the um like the moon sign, when you come in, that's like your PhD sign. You're really, you have that in the other, the lesson that you'd have to learn would be coming from your ascendant. And mm-hmm. if that was the case, like what about somebody that has like the same sign, even like somebody like Greg, who's a Libra moon and a Libra rising, or other mm-hmm. people that aren't even a triple, but still have the same moon and the same rising sign. Yeah, I... Um, I think Tom's uh, very, very good too at his uh, description because he he brings it from perspectives that most can't. But I always look at the the ascendant as you know that's that's how um, that's how people are going to see you or that's how you're going to start things. Um, and so you always want to look at life and it's like, all right, when I'm you know let's say that. Um, you lost your job, and and maybe a parent passed away, and and it just you know your life's got a, a lot of endings, and then beginnings um, have to come right after that because you don't have any choice. The universe said you're ready. I always look at uh, one's 
rising sign for how they begin then. And so you want to, uh, you really, I think, reveal that when something happens to you that's kind of out of maybe your realm. You know, you didn't plan for it. It didn't, it didn't uh, you know, it, it like wasn't even in the cards and it showed up. That's when I really notice people's ascendant signs um, mm. it's that they really show themselves. So if you have the moon there, you're going to be good at, ha- you know, when those events happen, I think you'll be very versed. But it, it, I think the reminder will be because the moon, kind of, you kind of want to go back to the moon and you want to remember. And, and, and so if you have a moon that's with the ascendant, I always tell those individuals, it's just a reminder to, to you're very good at things, but you got to get going. you got to start, you know, you start things and, and make sure that um, when an ending happens, you you kind of get the gumption to go. And, and so that's why I always kind of try to remind them if that makes sense. Interesting. I appreciate that. You know, I have one last question. I, I was also, um, I was in the chat room before, Jim. So uh, people people were saying, and uh, one person, I forgot who wrote this, but they wrote, I wonder, does he work psychically? Or are you doing this all through astrology, but are, are, are you also, you know, a bit psychically or intuitively in tune with the person you're reading? And are you also partly channeling other information as you're doing people's charts and chart work? I think um, I, I do think it's a combination, but I don't think you truly can do that until you. Um, astrology is the weirdest subject I've ever learned. In, in that, um, I may like read about <laughs> Pluto. I, I've about five. I've read four or five books about Pluto in depth. Jeffrey Green's probably the best um, writer uh, as far as in depth about Pluto. Um, but I'd read it, and it would almost be to a subconscious state, and then I'd catch myself maybe driving down the road or in the shower laying in bed where it would, I'd start getting download more, you know, more of that energy and understanding it deeper. And, and I, until you get to that point, I think you just read the chart, and, you know, I, th- I think you're trying to almost uh, justify, all right, here's Mars, square, Venus, and I'm justifying it because this is what I read. But when you really get in-depth with this and it, you really start owning it and, and getting it downloaded, it happens throughout the day, at night, sleeping, whatever. I think then you almost do do that from a subconscious state. Uh, I think you tap into the, the universe's information, and you do almost um, uh, intuitively, I think, read the chart. You know, you're looking at it, you're seeing it, and you're just letting yourself be downloaded the, the information that you know. Because if you look at it, all the planets when they're put on a chart and all the um, aspects, it's impossible to – you know, have just the mind working, so to speak. So I think exactly. it's a blending. Yeah, I think I the soul agree. Oh, mind my God, excellent. I agree with you totally, and I like the way that you explained that, too. That was okay. excellent. Excellent. So well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for for uh, taking my questions, and uh, thanks so much for uh, having me on the show. <laughs> well, we appreciate, appreciate you calling. Thank, thank you so thanks, much. Thanks, so Elaine. It's a good, hear- oh. good hearing from you. It was so good to yeah, be on. Yeah, bye, Oh, thank you so much, Sherry. It was so nice to hear your show, too. You're doing a great job. It's like, seems like you've been doing it. You're like a natural, so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so sweet. Thanks so much, because I'm totally tripping, I tell you. (laughs) Oh, my God, you had me laughing a whole bunch of times. I was like, I I think you guys are great. So thank you again, and uh, have a great night. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, folks, that, that was uh, psychic. Uh, that was psychic astrologer Helene Lipson, who has a show here on N Five D Radio on Wednesday evenings at eight PM Eastern. So be sure to check her show out as well. So let me uh, just jump topic here a little. Many people in this genre have seen a huge shift in consciousness. What caused this? We can go back to Greg. Um we can go back to a few events, uh, but I, you know, I look back and you know I'm a big follower of Saturn through the signs, and uh, I, I think we can go back to Saturn and um, when Saturn was in Pluto back in the mid '80s. I'm sorry, in Scorpio in the mid '80s, and and where it is now. Um, I think that that was an awakening for us um, here on Earth to start addressing um, what's really going on, and that is that. We're, all, we're being manipulated um, through a series of j- – just series of events are manipulating us, whether it be food or the mind control through TV. And I think Saturn and, uh, and Scorpio showed that the most. And then as Pluto emerged, uh, Pluto being in Scorpio in the um, 
mid 80s to early 90s as well. I think that just like laid the groundwork for us to where we are today. Um, when Uranus went in Aries in 2011, I think the, that we had to like awaken and take whatever has happened and start moving forward. Uh, we just so happened to, to get lucky and have Pluto in Capricorn, which is uh, d- the destroying of the sign. Pluto destroys the sign where the weaknesses or the, the flaws are. And when it went into Capricorn, it's like we have to address money, government, uh, the medical, the warring, the powers, the you know just the structures that have been created. Um, so I think we can go back to the two times Saturn. The last two times Saturn has been in in Scorpio, and then where Pluto you know fallen uh, in Scorpio, and then of course in Sagittarius, and and then into mm-hmm. Capricorn. I think that's what we can look at um, as the reason why I think the awakening is now. It seems like I know a lot of people that awoken in 2009. Was there something yeah. specifically that happened in that year? Yeah, uh, Pluto went into early in 08. It went into um, Capricorn. Then it came out, mm-hmm. uh, went back into Sagittarius, and then it went back into Capricorn late 2008. We know that was the banking scandal. Mm-hmm. Um you know, we were in the middle of all that. And then, of course, it stayed there. Um, and then the eclipses, actually, as Pluto it went into Capricorn, the eclipses went into Capricorn uh, Cancer. And eclipses are the universe's way of saying you're ready to be shown kind of more of how the universe works. You're evolved enough. So Pluto going there is kind of like mankind was going to start getting shown um, really what's going on versus maybe what, you know, uh, everybody was settling for, so to speak. Um, but also with Pluto going to Capricorn, and, and the fir- we, we divide each sign by 10 degrees. It's, each sign is 30 degrees. And uh, when Pluto first went into Capricorn, all the way through the 10th degree, it was more of just the revealing process of, all right, this is going on, this is going, you know, so everybody's getting all these events shown to them. But once it hit 10 degrees, which was last year, uh, we now – I have to do something about it. And so we're now in that next phase, that 11 through 20 degree, that 10 through 19 degree, where we have to do something about it. And that's what, what's happening right now um, is we have to wake up. We have to do something here because what's being shown, we can't avoid. It's, it's just it's becoming too obvious. And so that's what's happening. It's coming in the news and the events are coming in ways that you just can't hide from them. And, and so, you know, I think the awakening has to be great that we have to do something. This is our time to stand up for our life, you know, and, and so we've got to do it now. Mm-hmm. Now, Pluto stays in Capricorn until 2023. Right on schedule, as you mentioned, we saw a collapse of the banking system in 2008 with the exception of the too-big-to-fail, too-big-to-jail banks. We've also seen the beginning of the collapse of the Roman Catholic Church with work mm-hmm. that with the work that Kevin Annette is doing and there are revolutions happening all around the world. What can we expect from this point forward in regard to Pluto and Capricorn? Go back to and I think we talked a little bit on the show, seventeen sixty to seventeen seventy six, last transit of Pluto through Capricorn. So I, you know, we're gonna get uglier. I hate to say that it's going to get worse, mm-hmm. but I agree. It has to because there's not enough that have woken. Now, I can't believe the amount of people that have, uh, you know, awakened to what's going on. But there's not enough, and they're not. It's not like at the soul level yet, where uh, there's no avoiding it. There's no turning back. It's got to be addressed, and and you're relentless with it. Now, now Greg, you've been that way. I've been that way, and and mm-hmm. uh, Sherry, I'm sure it sounds like you've been. But you know, we've got to get that that 22, 23, 24 year old. We got to get them involved. We also got to get the 55 to 60 year olds in about 70s, you know. And I think that's happening amongst all of them because we can't let another generation who's very powerful coming in. We can't uh, allow them to be uh, misled or or um, or just you know uh, taught things that just aren't true. We got to stop this, and and I think that's why we're all doing what we're doing at this point. Well, um, you know, I was, uh, Greg wanted to me to mention the fact that, you know, my daughter has actually, she's gone from calling me crazy all the time when I was talking about reptilians a few years ago and telling me to shut up, to now all of a sudden saying, oh my God, what's happening in this world? Nobody cares, you know, and I'm like, oh, you're awakening. Okay, so now you know what I went through a few years ago. Now you're getting it. But um, my daughter has actually, um, Greg is actually helping her with um, her blog site and her Tumblr. 
and she's 21 years old, and she is now, well, I'll kind of just, I'll kind of introduce her because she's going to probably start having a show on Friday night in 5D Radio. Um, Beautiful. And like I said, her name's Jessica Sanchez, She's and she's 21 years old, and she describes herself as a blogger, a wifey, she's not married, I promise, a scientist and a mermaid, and she's really a true, a very, very true indigo child and a very true Leo, and she is the first one to, I'm going to say shizzle disturb, um, breaks down walls, barriers, and she sticks up for all of the underserved disadvantaged anyone who's under obstacles or bullied she's in there and she's just beating everything up but um she describes herself as a clumsy mermaid princess who just wants peace and she created a project called the spirituality blog or the spirituality project and it's at the spirituality project.tumblr.com so that all beings could have a place to share their soul and their deep unanswered questions. I'm kind of reading what she said. And she says, I've gone to hell and back, but that's sometimes how the best things are created from rock bottom. My mission is to help others to reach their own inner peace and enlightenment. I truly care about making this a better world. Come join me in my mystical army of peace and love. And she is a vegetarian, and she also has a plant diary. And she's really and truly trying to reach other people her age and to awaken them and her generation to really what's happening in this world and, you know, how we're being very, so very controlled through the media and, you know, even the harp. Now she's starting to finally see chemtrails. I've only been talking about them for years, but now she's starting to really notice them. But better late than never, right? So um, so even even my, my 11-year-old's like, look, Mama, look at all the chemtrails today. And I was like, I know, darn it, I hate them. But um, so she's starting to notice. But, you know, I say everybody awakens in their own divine time, and you have – and like I said, I try not to judge other people in their awakening. I never, ever call people sheeple because I have psychically seen people as the biggest warriors you've ever seen in your life in the astral. In their sleep, they wake up, they go to their normal nine-to-five job, they, they're their their soccer mom, they do their tour totally normal life. Anyone would call them a sheeple. And at night, they're a warrior fighting like you cannot believe. So I say, you know, don't judge anybody. You have no idea what they're doing, who they are, what their life is. So you should just kind of be quiet. So that's the way I say it. I say everybody's doing some part that is on this earth, and you have no idea what they're doing. So you should just be compassionate and understanding and do your own thing. Well, another thing, too, I've, I've I'm a big follower of uh, Jessica's blog. She does a wonderful, wonderful job. And because she is so young, she's going to be reaching all these people like you were just talking about, Jim. That's what yep. we need are, are these, these youth to come on here and have shows like this to awaken their, their peers. Now, <laughs> this is funny. I was at the uh, drum circle a couple weeks ago with my daughter. And there's a, a couple girls that are there that I know. This one girl, Chelsea, she's a uh, cashier at Earth Origins, this holistic store that I go to and she's a big supporter of N5D. I give her business cards and she hands them out to every customer. Anyway, um, I saw her there at the drum circle with my daughter and she comes up, gives me a hug, introduces me to her friend Julie and uh, I introduce them to my daughter Brittany and now they're all about the same age, you know, early, early 20s. Brittany turns 20 this uh, July and uh, they hit it off like they were old friends and uh, Britt was kind of surprised at first to see that I actually have young followers. <laughs> but as it turned out, I mean, they, they ended up talking to each other as if they were old friends and definitely part of each other's soul family. It was, it was really, really um, heartwarming to see. And before Brittany left to go back to New York, I asked her if she'd like a uh, N5D tank top. She said, yeah. And so I, I, I sent her one. And uh, a couple of days ago, she sent me a picture of her wearing it. So, okay. you know, my, my daughter has definitely awoken because I've been talking to her, to, to her about this stuff all of her life. But now she's really starting to turn the corner a little, and she sees that other kids her age are doing this. So I think it's important that somebody like Jessica can come on and have a show like this where she can bring on people, maybe even you as a, as a, as a guest, to get a younger person's 
opinion and uh, viewpoint. Yes, and I and you know that's going to be the key to this because we have a say so, but we're only a slice of of humanity, and we need those other age groups and their influences and and their ideas because they're going to come up with ideas that we we can't possibly come up with, and that's what we need. So um, we all got to get behind this, and it's happening. It's just Pluto moves so slow; it just takes time. So, but well, I love that. That's the, so that's uh, the Scorpio the generation. We were talking about yes, that on, a, yes, on one of our previous shows, the Pluto and Scorpio generation, who's going to take everything that we've done and just take it miles ahead. And this could be yes. the start of something big. It'll be light years from what we even could imagine, absolutely. And, and that's what we've got to remember. These, these younger generations that are coming are way beyond us uh, as far as evolution, uh, their, their state of evolution and, and their possibilities. But that doesn't mean we're we're minimalized. We got to get them. We got to help them get to where they can, you know, really make a difference. So, so getting back to the uh, shift in consciousness, mm-hmm. why are so many people awakening yet? Why are so many people still asleep? When we get to the edge of the cliff, uh, that's when I think the uh, the intensity increases because it's it's like. You, it's it's going to be it gets tougher and tougher to avoid. There's still people able to avoid, but what's happening is Pluto is pulling and just destroying what they thought was real. And um, you know the bitter pill that's going to have to be swallowed is that basically throughout our lives, Greg, we're in our mid 40s, we've been lied to, um, and we're having to face that reality. And some people are having a tough time doing that. They want to stay in that comfort zone. So we're at the we're at the edge of the cliff, and it's time when I mean, we've got to go and see what's uh, over the cliff. Uh, and not that we're going to be foolishly doing it, but there's more. We got to take this thing because we've we've used what and we've abused uh, w- you know what we've done and where we've gone. Now we got to take it somewhere else. Yeah, because I I mean I know for myself personally that you know in when I really and truly woke up in 2009 and kind of was more open to the the Bibliocapoli site. I'm sorry, I probably destroyed it. I love the that name. website. I'm so sorry, I probably killed the name. But 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 when I finally opened to it and I saw all about these underground dumbs and different types of beings and some of those things they were doing, and I literally cried for three months. I said, "Oh my God." What kind of world am I in? And I had no idea I was in it. And I was so upset because I felt like my whole, I, it was almost like I was in the, the movie The Sixth Sense. And I was at the right. end of the movie saying, why didn't I see this? Why Now now yeah. I'm seeing this at the very end. Why didn't I notice this stuff my whole life? And I was yeah. so angry and so upset and so horrified that I just, I think I literally cried for three months. I was so, I was just so upset. There was nothing else to say. I was like, oh my God, a million million children missing a year and this is what they think happened it it was terrifying and i and ever since then you know you can't stick your head back in the ground once you're awake once you didn't know (laughs) yeah you do that's how nature works and that's pluto is I, i think reminds us that we are um we're, we we will never defeat nature. We got to get in rhythm with nature. And and once you're shown something like that, um, you can't ever go back. There's no way you can't. And, and so and that's what Pluto's doing. And, and this child trafficking and and you know this uh, the evil that's being done by the powers to be. It's so bad that um, I think when it gets revealed, there's nobody that'll be able to turn back. It's just a matter. Of we got to get it out to the people. Let them understand what just what's been going on and it's not by humanity it's i think it's by more of the the elitist so to speak so mm-hmm. so they're, de- they're definitely doing their part for sure yeah Jim, yeah. will will it take an event like the collapse of the roman catholic church to awaken those who are asleep yes it's going to take a it's going to take an event of um, if you think of what everybody's, what I'm looking at right now, Greg, is uh, because Capricorn does rule money and power, so it's going to take the monetary system to, to fall apart. And because that's what uh, the people that are still able to hide, they're making big money. They can hide from it. They can go get their lake house and sit on the boat or jet ski and do whatever. They can go vacation or you know or, or just whatever and consume themselves. But when the dollar gets affected and it's everybody and everybody's looking at it, I think that's when this thing. That that's when it's game on, and, and you know I think if you're sitting there in elite shoes, I think they think we can affect the dollar, and then we can affect humanity. And I just I think they're wrong. I think they're going to get a big surprise here. So mm-hmm. Pluto wins. You know um, nature wins. So 
and, and I, that's kind of my motto I live by, two cycles of nature, and everything's righted. So. Well, a lot of people think that, you know, our Earth, Gaia, you know, whatever they want to refer to it, has its own consciousness. And I was wondering if all of the other planets have their own consciousness the same as we think that Earth does. Yeah, I, I think they do, and I think the way we figured it out is when a, a planet went through a sign and we we documented what happened through humanity, I think it talks, that gives us information, it's talking to us and telling us what that planet's consciousness is, if that makes sense. And so, you know, we didn't come up with uh, the energies of Mars just by guessing or just, ah, I just think it's this or whatever. We watched events, things happened, we felt deep within us. Um, the energies of that planet because it was talking it was speaking right to each one of us and so yes i absolutely think they're alive and i think they pass the energy to us we have opportunities to pick it up if we want avoid it if we want but we're in a time now where i think we can't it can't be avoided the grand cross as greg referred to earlier uh has been in full motion for over a year and a half now and i just you know i, I you just can't avoid it right now it's got to be uh dealt with and, and that's what's happening so well, I mean, it's definitely, you know, it's not, they can't hide it at this point. There's no way to hide it because they can't control the Internet, even if they can control things like Google or Facebook or other things. They still can't control a lot of these private chat rooms and groups. There's no control yes. over them. So information is still going to be passed regardless yes. of what tried to be stopped it's impossible at this point and i think that's really what's also led to the breakdown of it is the fact that they maybe couldn't contemplate what exactly was going to happen you know and, and now coming with a lot of the free energy devices and you know soon to be coming free wi-fi everywhere you know even in that you know the outskirts of africa getting you know wi-fi out of thin right. air you know they're especially not going to be able to control anything Right, and you know the the thing about me is I look at the Wi-Fi and the internet. Is all they're doing is mimicking nature. We are all connected. You know this. Uh, Greg knows that. I know that. And they're just connecting to in a physical form. If we could all understand deeper that we're connected in a physical slash non physical form, we could have that. It's at our fingertips. It's just uh, we just got to gain confidence in that and then work the muscle, so to speak, or work the the soul. To, to really gain confidence and just you know you're gathering the information you're you're it's it's happening I, I was thinking about talking about child trafficking and then you bring it up tonight you know and it's so <laughs> we've got it you know um but but it, you know I guess the key is here to just remember that you got to be in nature it's fluid you got to be in rhythm with it. it's not it may not come on Tuesday at 8:30 in the morning when you want it but it'll be there when you need it, if that makes sense. And so if we all just gather or, or get more in that flow, I think things would slow down. They become, I wouldn't say easier, but they come more fluid, and then we could we could do something with that that I think nobody could, you know, uh, put their finger on it as far as in the physical plane. That's personally what, what I do as a psychic medium is how I connect is the realization that, we all are one consciousness, and that includes plants and animals, fish, humans, everything. And that's why I'm able to communicate with everything, even if it's a snail, is because you realize that it still is energy and it still has consciousness, and it's all on the same plane, and it's all one big thing. And if you can, that, you know, that's kind of how I can do remote readings as well, is that I'm able to kind of, it's almost like, you have a huge network, and there's little dots of energy on this huge network, and you just find that person's dot, and you land on mm -hmm. it, you know, and you're all part of the same network. And if you can pick up that person's point or that snail's point or the plant's point, then you can communicate with it because that's the only way that I can describe how I'm able to do it. Otherwise, it's really a weird thing. You know, and, you know, of course, when I was younger, I kind of thought that I was nuts, like things weren't really talking to me. Like, it's your imagination. The fish is not really talking to you. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, years later, I realized that, you know, it was telling me it was going to die, and then it really did die. And I'm kind of like, okay, there's something to this. So, right. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but, but that is the, it is the realization that we're all one. And I, I think really that's what's going to make this world, you know, the wonderful place that, it could be for everybody is, is the realization of for more people to realize that we're not all separate by 
countries, by religions, by races, that we, we're all the same piece of spirit, consciousness, everything is. We just look different. We look different, right. sound different, but we're all we're all the same under the skin, you know? And so, and I think when people can come to that realization, then, you know, this world might be a, a better place. Yeah. You know, one thing uh, I'm going to say to that um, is that I'm a little saddened that it's we're almost being dismissed because, first of all, I do believe that we're all connected. But uh, um, lately I've just been having this sensation of um, the way this thing's being um, uh, passed information-wise to the, the younger in generation. They're losing their culture, though. That's the one thing I'm saddened with. You know, like I'm Italian, and I remember my grandfather, how proud he was, and um, it wasn't that we're, we were better than anybody, but I don't want my I want my kids to know that as well. But it's almost like they're dismissing our culture, you know. And so I, I don't want us to lose that either, because I think that um, then adds to the layer of the soul and gives you something else um, as you move through. So I think that's happened quite a bit, and I, and I want I don't want to lose that. So I hope we gain that back um, with still the realization that we're all connected. So I'm hoping that's that also happens here as we move forward. If that does that make sense? Oh, oh, definitely. I agree with you. I'm part Italian, also. So you know, of course, we like our Sunday night, you know, dinners and absolutely, you know, absolutely. other things. And you know, <laughs> my children are half Brazilian, so of course, I make all the Brazilian dishes, and they know the dances, and they like that part of their heritage. And I think it's perfectly, you know, okay to have these differences and love them and appreciate them, and still, you know, still be one, but have yes. these unique, wonderful differences. And it's the same with people that have now become spiritual that maybe used to be of a different religion, they still love that part of that religion that was their culture. They still yes. have yes. memories of going to church with their family and singing songs and being together. So even though they're now spiritual, they still have that, that background that's precious to them, you know? Yes. I agree yeah, and that's, with you completely. Um, yeah, and, that, and that's why I try to tell people we got the Gemini moon coming. What do you know? Who are you? You know, don't don't tell me what everybody else is. I don't, I don't need to know that. I can find that anywhere. What makes you you? And and so that's part of that, the heritage or the culture that you know we, we, you've got to develop that core of who you are, um, because then you bring that uniqueness to others, and that's what you know. It may be exactly what they need. So so yeah, we're talking on the same page. So what do you think, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> Greg left the show. <laughs> Greg, you know what I'm telling you? I'm like. Greg, start talking. Greg, start talking. <laughs> no, actually, actually, Greg's mic was on mute. I was just totally digging the uh, conversation. <laughs> um, and what I think is that we have a lot of callers uh, lined up here, so I'm thinking we should probably bring some on. And right now I recognize this one phone number, um, and a lot of people uh, will know you from her writing on N5D. This is uh, Michelle Walling from CosmicStarseeds.com. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Greg. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Jim. Hi, Hi Michelle. Hi, Michelle. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Sherry. You sound great, Sherry. I love your energy. It adds a great um, aspect to the show. She's wonderful, isn't <laughs> oh, she? thanks. Well, you know, uh, oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you so much. Thanks for making me feel so comfortable because, because honestly, I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit shy to begin with, and then once Ew. I start opening up, Ew. I just can't shut up. <laughs> So, so it's, it's a it's a blessing. It's like it's like um, you know Greg's Libra, Libra, Libra. It's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> but um, oh, it's yeah. definitely fun, and um, it's definitely some fun, and um, I'm enjoying it in between my being nervous. <laughs> well, you got the hard part over. The beginning of the first show. It gets better from there for sure. I have a question for Jim, if I could. Sure. Jim, um, have, I, was in, I was a guest on a show yesterday where my friend had said that, um, and she's psychic, and she had said that Nibiru had returned. And I was wondering if you had an opinion or information on whether uh, Nibiru was actually Comet Ison. I have an opinion on that. I, we're two planets short if you look at the 12 signs, and I think the two planets have a different orbit. And I do think Nibiru is one. I'm, but I can't find anything that I can say, here's proof, here's scientific information, or, or you know, here's physical information I could show you. But I do think that, that there's planets that have a totally different orbit, and their their cycle is a cycle that 
is over several years. So um, mankind, maybe recent mankind, maybe hasn't seen the planet. And I do think we're there. We're in the galactic center where all matter is, and I think that's when we meet up with it. Maybe every twelve thousand, you know, thirteen thousand years. So um, I do absolutely believe that, and I've been watching that closely because I think that's what's affecting and also uh, awakening uh, mankind. I believe so, too. And she said that she feels like Nibiru is behind the sun and actually helping the sun to pulse the energies um, of higher consciousness that are coming from uh, the great central sun, Alcyon, and the Pleiades. And so I was wondering uh, what kind of effect does it have um, on humans and the planet when we are when the Earth is in alignment with our sun and then our sun also with Earth is in alignment with, for instance, Alcyone, which happened on, I believe, May 22nd, uh, mm-hmm. a couple of days ago. Yep, yep. Yeah. What, what um, kind of effect does it have, not only for, like, the Pleiades, but for any time our sun uh, lines up with another sun, with the Earth? Yeah, if you look at um, during that window, that 21st, 22nd of May, just look uh, throughout history what's uh, happened. Um, a lot of beginnings, a lot of things happen, a lot of information's uh, po- tossed out um, to the mainstream to where everybody can grab onto it. And I, I think the opportunity that happens around that time every year is uh, you to begin anew of um, – or, or continue the phase of, um, purposely and consciously of who you are, what you are, what do you know. And so it, it's time to get out there and learn again or to awaken to uh, something that you're drawn to and really study it, really figure it out, and then come out um, or come up with what you understand, not what everybody else does. And I think that's what I want to remind everybody at this time of year, every year, that, that you know, May 20th, 21st, 22nd, what do you know? Who are you? Why are you different? What are you bringing to the table that's going to help make a difference? Um, you know, and so I think it's an information kind of gathering or, and then uh, assimilating from the universe, I think, is what happens at that time. That's interesting, and I do agree with that. And I had I have one more question. Um, <laughs> you know how we leave ourselves clues in this lifetime, like, for instance, the synchronicities that, you know, Sherry had with Greg and, and you know, um, we find our soul family that way, but um, I left some clues for myself. It seems that um, I wanted to make sure that I had Orion's belt all over my body. So on, my, on the left-hand side of my face, I have a perfect um, Orion's belt, and then I, have, uh, I had one on the back of my neck. And, uh, and moles. I'm talking about moles. And I had to have those removed on the back of my neck because they would get irritated um, by, by jewelry that I would, necklaces. And of mm-hmm. course, um, they got irritated because they wanted me to pay attention to them. <laughs> right, <laughs> but I didn't right. get it then. But then now I also have, um, have it showing up on my leg with three red moles, you know, like a new type mole just to make sure that I understand that I have a connection there. And it kind of freaks me out because um, Orion has a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of war history and a lot of uh, dark and light beings um, that could be associated with Orion. But is like Orion supposed to be like the star nursery for our galaxy? Yes, yes. Yeah. So birth and creation happens there. Is there is there any other thing intuitively that you can uh, sense as to why I would put Orion all over my body <laughs> and, um, and and the pyramids in Egypt, you know, right, line up right. to Orion too. <laughs> yes, they do. And I I always look at Orion as where like things go to die to be re like transformed and, and into re rebirth happens. And so. But it's also where, like, I feel like the universe's information is there as well, if that makes sense. So I think it all gets figured out there, and it has to go there to get sorted out. Where are you? What are you? How far along? And then they, you know, you get the death happens and then rebirth happens. Mm -hmm. And um, so I I think with that, I would just, this is a very transformative life for you where I think you're going to put it, the potential sounds like could be to put it together. And so Mm -hmm. allow yourself that, allow yourself that. Mm-hmm. That um, that sounds right. Yeah, I'd love to have a reading with you. Um, can you tell me um, how how to schedule a reading? 
Yeah, you can get to me um, on the Wi-Fi site. Um, okay. And yeah, and you can just email me there, and just just email me information and give me times, and then I'll definitely get back with you, and we'll we'll make that happen. Can you repeat that site again? It's ypie twenty twelve dot com. Y e i e twenty twelve. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank. So well, thank you. Good Great questions. You. Same here. Same okay. Here. <laughs> Thanks okay, for calling, bye, Michelle. Bye. Right, bye. Bye. Uh, Michelle has a show here on N5D Radio on Thursday nights called The Cosmic Awakening Show at 8 p.m. Eastern. So check that out, everyone. Also, as I mentioned earlier in the show, Michelle and I collaborated on a new article about the future of education that we're, we're going to be releasing tomorrow. So check that out as well. And we're going to go to the phone lines. I see that um, area code 215 has been very patient and I'd like to welcome you to N5D Radio. Uh, can we get your name, please? This is Arlene. 215. Pardon me? Hello? Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? Can hey, you hear yes. me? How are you? It's Arlene. Arlene? Yes. yes. Hi, Arlene. Welcome Hi. to N5D Radio. Well, it's good to be here. I do have a question, though. You know, a lot of times people talk about the sun, the moon, the ascendant. But um, I know I, lately I've been reading a lot about the um, the sign that you're MC and IC, and it's, it really resonates with me because a lot of information is there that you can't get just from the other major planets. So mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about the role that plays in your chart. Yeah, the IC is the um, the lowest of the heavens um, at that moment of birth, so it's the, the cusp of the fourth house, and that is – Probably the most sacred space or sacred place in a chart. Um, mm-hmm. the, the moon rules the fourth house. So it, you know, being on that cusp, it's where you like go for security or safety, or or when you um, need to like remind yourself or, or remember. That happens there. A lot of faded events happen when a planet mm-hmm. crosses that IC. It is a very important, and we and we do skip over more than we should, so I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I think that, you know, and I watch people whenever Saturn's down there, life force is low. Um, they're really mm-hmm. sorting things out, and they're on an island um, to just make sure or remind themselves of who they are, where they've been, and what their capabilities and, and their um, strengths are. And so, you know, I like to – Saturn down there is no fun, but, but – um, when it is there, I think you remind, get reminded of that, hey, you came with certain abilities, and I'm reminding you of those so you can use those. You can tap into them more now than maybe ever, and so it's, it's a good time to go within. As far as the MC, uh, that's the, where the highest potential in one's chart. It's the noon or high heaven point, and um, mm-hmm. that's where we are out and about in the world, and it's where we everything we learned when we're working on uh, from within, when we're, planets are transit through the bottom of the chart, we then experience it in the outer world, and then we come to our potential, so to speak, where others, you know, come back to us and say, wow, I understand what you're doing, or you, what an accomplishment, or look what you've done. And, and so you kind of come to that completion state of, you know, uh, thinking of the the – the energy comes to you, and, and the, the first thought or spark happens, and then you work on it to get it to become something, and then you realize it in the physical world. That's the MC. So it's the potentials realized uh, on on the Earth or physical plane. And I had a second question. I was just wondering also about the asteroid Juno, because I actually have Juno at Midheaven, so that's the only planet I have in that area. And I'm always looking up things. I can't really find too much information about Juno. There's especially. not. Um, let me see if I... Uh, I have a book that had Juno, um, and it had pretty good descriptions of it. I think it's Horoscope Symbols by mm-hmm. Robert Hand. I think he had something okay. in there decent. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, are you uh, familiar with Robert Hand? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, I think you can probably go online and uh, mm-hmm. look up him and get something through there. I think that was the one of the better ones. The problem with the asteroids is, I don't. I don't think we've done justice to the research of of them mm-hmm. traveling through the zodiac. If that makes sense, I, I don't ever okay. tell people to not look at the asteroids. But mm-hmm. what I tell them is to study all you can and then feel that and start coming up with your own ideas of Juno um, okay. and the asteroids themselves as they transit. Because you can get them. Uh, you can you know where they are because you can pull it up. Uh, a lot of right, sites have right. to pull it up where it is. So I would do that. And then the best thing you do is where you have it at birth. Um, really just mm-hmm. take the energies that you find about it and then just at birth by sign and house and just feel it. And, and I, I think you'll like where you get because you seem pretty um, 
you seem like you're you, you really will uh, get dig dig deep and figure things out. I just I'm feeling that energetically, so I think that would be something. Yeah, yeah, I like can to figure out stuff out. But I'm yeah. so, I was so curious because I know I don't have anything up there, like at the top of my chart. I don't really have a lot of sign. This is Juno is right at Midheaven, and like you right. know, and looking it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what's your sign at Midheaven, if you don't mind? Gemini. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of busy energy, and you can put a lot of communication can happen there. So, yeah, I would mm-hmm. definitely do that and pursue it because you, you feel, I feel like you got that energy. You're going to get to the heart of it, if that makes sense, and you'll do something. Yeah, like yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> Good. Well, take your time. That, it, Gemini's can rush and, and can't, can't learn fast enough, I guess. So take your time there and allow yourself that. And You, know, you don't have to be perfect, if that makes sense. Okay. Well, okay. that's going to be a little hard for me because I, my, my rising is my rising is is um, Virgo. So. Oh no. <laughs> and Pluto, and I have Pluto. No, I'm Pluto and Virgo generation too. So. Oh, you are. Well, <laughs> welcome to the club. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. so. Okay. Well, I wish you the best, but that's a lot of energy there, Virgo and, and uh, Gemini, where they are. That's a lot of energy. So, do you even sleep? No, not really. I, I'm up at four in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm well, always doing multiple this is the things. Person, if this is the person I think it is, Arlene yeah. has some of the most astute comments that I've read <laughs> yeah. on all the yeah. things that I post. I, I, I love reading her comments. I even not mentioned that today. Nice. Yeah, she's very yeah. observant. Good energy. Yeah. And, she, and like I said, she's going to get to the bottom of it. You can feel it. You know, you just feel that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Okay, well, well, thank you. I'm really enjoying the show. Oh, well, good. Well, thank you for awesome. calling. Right, Thanks so much, you. Arlene. Call again. All right, you're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, gosh, we still have a few more callers. Are you ready for them, Jim? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. There's still some things I want to cover with you, too, so we're going to bounce back and forth between this okay. next caller and then a few more topics. So right good. now we're going to bring on area code 409. You're live on In5D Radio with Greg Sherry and Jim Delacoli. Can I get your name, please? Hi, my name is Lou Ann. Leanne? Lou Ann. Lou Ann. Hi, Lou Ann. Welcome yes. to In5D Radio. Do you have a Hi, question for Jim? You. Well, the, the question that I have, I've been listening, you know, for a while and uh, been very interested in, in what you're speaking about, people awakening. And myself, I'm 56 years old, and um, I'm a Reiki master, and I've been, you know, working in that the last few years. But all my life, I have felt um, energies, and I have... Um, you know, being born in the 50s and living through the 60s and the 70s and everything, I questioned everything. What I was taught was, um, you know, fact and, and real didn't feel right to me. It, what generation was the, the 50s? The Some of the 50s was actually Pluto in Virgo, but it was late Pluto in Hold on, I'm going to give that exactly to you right now because I found my older ephemeris. Pluto was in Virgo. So yeah, Pluto in Virgo, uh, 57. It, it got That's into Virgo. Okay, were you born early in the year or later in the October. year? October. Okay, so you're Pluto in Virgo. Yeah, you're Pluto in Virgo with us, and and so what we're trying to. What happened with the Pluto and Virgo generation is it's. Um, the Pluto and Leo groups, you know, they, they they're going to go and make this grander and bigger and better, and and so they did all that, and then now we had to, we got to come back and perfect what they did, and so we do we do uh, question everything, and we do want to, um, you know, get it right because what we feel once our job is if we don't get it right, then we're going to let the Pluto and Libra people down. Who Pluto and Libra have to go and experience through others. It's it's the you know through relationships or how are others doing it, and then they got to sort it out. We got to perfect it, and so that's what we're doing right now. Okay, that makes um, sense to me. Yeah, and I, I um you know the questioning thing um I I think it, uh, this is how and maybe I'm just saying this because it took me a while too. It took me to about 35 to really see things, maybe start seeing them as they were, but. I think that a lot of the individuals that are um, advanced, so to speak, uh, Luann, are um, 
they had to almost be kept from their their abilities so they didn't get misused or abused by the individual or others that they surrounded themselves with. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so the awakening happens later in life when the individual is super wise because they've worked hard on this and they don't want to get tripped up, and so the awakening happens later to where they, you know, they have a good sense and they understand, and and so nothing against anybody else, but I think the awakening happens because now you uh, are mature enough to handle all that you truly worked on uh, and the power that it can bring you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That that makes sense. And and also, the question that I originally called about... um, the last, I don't know, I guess about the last month, it, it seems like I've just come upon roadblocks constantly in everything that I do. It seems like everything is just going wrong and and blocking me from doing what I need to do. Or is something going on in the planets? Or We got the, um, uh, in, in April, the eclipses went back into Libra and mm-hmm. into Aries. And so the quest now for us Librans is that, um, and we've been preparing for this, that if we're on the wrong track or if if something needs to be tweaked and we're not seeing it, we're maybe getting a roadblock or something's happening to us to where we're having to, like, maybe see things from a whole other perspective because we're better than that or, or there's more for us. And so the key will be here is to not not get consumed in the roadblocks but to awaken to the eclipses and their magic that they're going or they're trying, the universe is trying to bring us. Because the universe is basically saying to us, Libras, your turn, you can do it, you're there, I'm bringing it to you. So um, if you're getting tripped up, see what the event is and say, wait a minute, why am I consuming myself here? I'm missing something here, you know, and, and just step back and look. Just try to see it all, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't get frustrated because we just started getting the eclipses, and you know frustration it, it can easily be had because of the eclipses coming there. And how long is it going to last? A year and a half. A but year and a half. <laughs> but no, it gets. I guess what I'm saying is, it's the eclipses. They show us what they're trying to reveal to us. You you start picking it up, you will. So it's not going to be a year and a half of obstacles. It's going to be a tremendous opportunity. You just got to break through this little wall here. That's 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 in our in our face. We're all doing it as Libras. Um, Greg and I mm-hmm. talked. We didn't talk about eclipses, but Greg stepped back from the show a little bit, and you know we're all doing those things. We're trying to reassess and figure, but that's healthy. And, and so you're doing the right thing. Just don't let frustration seep in there. Yeah. Well, you know, I I don't let the frustration get to me. I just keep asking why. You know, yeah. why this? Why now? Um, because it, it's just blocking. Everything that I'm trying to do. Eclipses are the universe's way of saying uh, evolution is here, and they can bring it to you in a way that you could never imagine it. So the, the opportunity is tremendous. It's somewhere. It's just up to you to, to open to it, if that makes sense. Because eclipses give hit- us better than we're found. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Greg. Right. And I think you hit the nail on the head. That that's it. It's the opportunity. So don't look at it as something negative. Just like the retrograde planets on your birth chart, this is an opportunity for spiritual progression. So jump right into it. Figure out what the lesson it is that you need to learn, and just relish the opportunity. Okay. Yeah. All right. And know that well, we're all you. helping you because we're Libras too. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it just. I don't know. In the last three weeks, it has just been so intense and, yeah. you know, just all kinds of crazy things going wrong, totally out of my control. Yeah. And so it, it makes me step back and say, oh, my God, you know, what does this mean? Why right. are all of these things happening now? Um, it, we it's also just, have Mars- it's been confusing. Mars has been in Libra for the last six, eight weeks, so it's retrograde, getting ready to go back direct. It just got went back direct yesterday, in fact. So, mm-hmm. um, so no, it'll start leaving there. But the eclipses will show you the opportunities now. So don't let frustration sink in. You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you for calling. Thank you, Luann. All right. All right. Thank All right you. Take Bye. care now. Bye. Bye. And um, I have another question then. 
I maybe it's one, going to be one of the last questions is that we're we're seeing an increase in diseases, Jim, such as MERS, SARS, Ebola, and some in antibiotic resistance to a lot of things. And is there anything in the charts that's explaining why this is happening now? This is where I think astrology is most effective. Greg and I talked on the phone the other day. Um, the cycles of the planets as they transit through the zodiac, from our perspective, uh, are, are really everything. If you can get in the rhythm of, like, say, Saturn, which uh, is in, in Scorpio now, it's a 29-year cycle. And the last time Saturn was coming through um, Scorpio, we the AIDS virus really like took off and you know really started being an issue. Hit mainstream and it was everywhere. Same things happening now as as uh, Saturn's back now in Scorpio for this is the, the it hasn't been the, since the mid eighties, and so we're seeing that we're seeing um, and I you know I don't I don't necessarily look for it I let it come to me that's how I operate I don't if I if something comes to me I'm not like let me go prove my point I just let it keep coming to me and so as I'm watching these diseases we talked about this I think on the last show Greg about let's look for those. Uh, new viruses, new diseases that are coming out, or, or diseases may reemerge um, and become issues with Saturn being in Scorpio, because Scorpio is uh, the rule of the eighth house, which rules all things hidden. It rules cancer and, and viruses and diseases and war and nuclear and all that. But um, I, th- I think the thing we need to look at is how can is, is it going to affect the population? And I think you know a couple things with the viruses that we're seeing, and also the food and the impurities in the food that they're allowed to be put in. I think that's also Saturn and Scorpio. And so we're, we're addressing those things. And we've got to figure out a way in these cycles to get them, the, you know, the, the two signs before Saturn gets in Scorpio. We need to start addressing that and becoming healthier and healthier as Saturn's in, in Virgo uh, that it's the next time and start move, getting ahead of this, if that makes sense. So, um you know, I'm, I've been watching, and, and, you know, the diseases have shown up, and, and it's, it's right on cue with Saturn being in Scorpio. So we want to watch uh, the things that eat you from the inside or, or, you know, make the immune system weak. That's what's happening now, and that's things we need to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a lot of turmoil in the Roman Catholic Church. What's happening astrologically as to why this is happening? Is it all Pluto and Capricorn, or is there something else? Well, Pluto is in Capricorn, which is the sign Saturn rules, and Saturn's in Scorpio, the sign Pluto rules, so they're mutual receptive right now. And so I think that the hidden um, and the power that the church had is being revealed. Um, Wherever there's power uh, in the last several generations, seemed like evil was right there next to it. So I think what's happened is those two are just feeding off each other. Those two planets in each other's signs are feeding off each other and just revealing well, just what's going on, and the Catholic Church is a powerful entity on the planet, and it's all being exposed. And and you know, it's like it's just one thing after another. Every day, it seems like something new, sh- you know, showing itself. And and it's up to us to sort it out, you know, filter it, figure out what's happening. And I, I think that I'm not going to say it's going to be a downfall of that, but I do think it's forever going to alter that. Um, and we'll see what happens. Like Pluto destroys anything that's not, uh, you know, in in line with nature. So. I can't say that has been, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So is this similar to the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers battling one another for ultimate power? Yes. I, I do think the powers that have controlled are being revealed, and they're all trying to find new ways to go get power without being revealed. And uh, nature is relentless, and I think us as individuals, we're, we are relentless when – when something's revealed to us uh, that uh, that we never saw, we never would have thought, um, and, and it becomes a, we become aware of it, we can't let it go. And so it, there's, this is the time of being relentless, and that's what's happening. People are not letting it go. Death is not a uh, it's not an obstacle anymore. People they'd rather know that they helped humankind to have some sort of life uh, continue when they're gone than to worry about themselves dying. I think that you're seeing that more and more. And I'm, I'm not advocating, advocating at all, Greg, that we all go out there on a suicide mission. But I think that people are realizing that if I don't do something about it, how bad is it going to get, you know? And so death's not even considered. We're all just trying to get this thing done, you know? Well, you know, what I've seen more and more is as there are more, you know, really – you know, bad diseases coming out that they're saying we don't have any antibiotics to, we don't have this. I'm seeing more and more natural things yes. 
I'm going to call nature. them natural cures, but I'm seeing more nature come out now than yes. I've ever seen in my entire life. And, you know, I, I'm, I will say that I, you know, I live in California where, you know, medical, they call it medical marijuana. It's actually just pot given a name so that it could be sold legally. But um, I've seen it do absolutely remarkable things for people with seizures, um, for people with ulcerative colitis, for people with pain, for people with anxiety. And um, I, I just, I, 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 it's it, especially with the edibles because the edibles um, provide more of a, a body high than a head high, so they do a lot more medicinally those and some of the mm-hmm. resins and stuff like that. But I've just I've seen remarkable things happening with things as simple as apple cider vinegar and you know what what Greg I remember when Greg used to have gray hair of all things and I was like what in the heck happened to your hair you're a blonde you know and he said oh I drink the distilled water and the smoothies and I was like you got to be kidding me you know well, like, now now it's ozone <laughs> water I don't do the distilled but it, my hair okay, is but- still blonde yeah. Okay, but your hair really? turned Really? I didn't know that, right? Yeah. It, it, come on. I'm a girl. I pay attention. I have to use color. I have to buy color. Okay, this man just had to drink <laughs> something. So, um, no, of course I paid attention to that. All of a sudden, he went from gray to blonde. And, and it's like, right. what in the world did you do? And he's like, I just drank all this water. And I'm like, wow, that's like magic water. And so I... I think that even though all these bad things are coming out at the same time, they're saying, look, that's bad, but here, take some garlic because it might work as well as, you know, as a penicillin. So I think right. that's a wonderful thing that's happening, too, is that we're returning more to nature than we've, we've ever done. Yeah, and that's, I think that's the lesson right there in uh, Pluto in a nutshell. It has to get so bad that you can't continue, and so and that's where we're at. We can't continue taking the medication. You know, we just can't. We can't continue the chemicals in the food and the additives in the food. And so we're going back to what is, what does work. It's always worked. And so we're going back to that. And so that's just where we are. You know, people are realizing that I take this pill for my high blood pressure, then I got to take this for my cholesterol and that for, so I don't get organ damage and that. Next thing you know, you got eight pills you're taking. Well, that's not right. You know, that's just not how it works. So people are waking up to that. Well, you can thank the Pluto and Virgo generation, Sherry, and you're welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> and you are welcome. We'll take credit for well, that. And, yeah. and, As a and generation, Greg, I don't know about you. we will take credit for that. Yes, and, and I don't know about you, Greg, but it's been since like 02, 03 that I've been, you know, hydrogen peroxide, uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, Laetrile, you know, all, I mean, I've just been one thing after another just finding out about how unbelievable some of these things are that just pretty much in nature, you know. You know, I just I just removed a mole with apple cider vinegar. No kidding. Plain and simple. Yeah. I mean, there's so many natural cures out there for people. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, we're we're convinced by big pharma that you have to do it this way. But if you know, as a matter of fact, I just posted something on my other website, BodyMindSoulSpirit.com. Two natural ways to whiten your teeth. One is with turmeric. Uh, I'm sorry, turmeric. Um, just make it into a little paste with some organic turmeric. And uh, brush it into your teeth, and it whitens your teeth. And the other one, which I, I do every day, is called oil pulling, where I use this organic, cold-pressed, extra virgin coconut oil. I swish it in my mouth. Your teeth end up white as hell. And uh, really? not only that, but it pulls out the toxins from your gums, and uh, it helps you in that way as well. So, I mean, there's so many things that are out there that people can learn about, and that's what I'm sharing and helping to spread this word on natural organic ways of doing things so it's you know it's part I'm, I'm helping our generation as well as other generations by you know coming up with these these new ideas and and cures for everyone yeah i mean we, we want to leave it better than Yay. we found it i mean that's the objective you know mm-hmm. so now michelle in the chat room asks is the vatican tied to satan i mean saturn haha <laughs> satan that was an intentional freudian slip <laughs> okay <laughs> Saturn, Saturn and Capricorn were real religion, so yes. See, I find, it, I find it interesting. I find it interesting how people exchange wedding rings, and you know, with, with Saturn being in astro theology, Satan. Yes. The rings represent the rings of Saturn, rings of Saturn which yes. hence are the rings of Satan. Yet yes. they do this in in, in uh, all these churches. So if people really studied 
astrology, astrotheology, and understood what they're really making their vows or who they're really making their vows to, they would be astonished. Yes. It's so right there in your face. It's, it's almost comical once you wake up. I mean, it's just everything's right there. And the more you know, the easier it is for you to figure it out and the simpler it becomes. I mean, it's just it's right there in your face. Can I use that as an excuse then for why my mine didn't work out then? Yeah, absolutely. Because of the rings? That, I, okay, I'm going to use it because of the rings. About helping. Okay. <laughs> well, it's funny. Between, between Sherry, Jim, myself, and Michelle, we've all been married two times. And I can tell you so many people that have married twice but said there's no way in the proverbial hell that I'm going to get married a third time. So. Well, we, you know what? We shall always see what happens. Nobody, you can't say never. You never know. You never know, though. Um, I'm just not getting a ring again because evidently the rings are cursed. <laughs> I'm going to get something else. I'll get it, the tattoo or binding or something strange. Now I'm never getting a ring after this. You're welcome. <laughs> no, no, thank you. get a piercing or something. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I love piercings. I love piercings. Okay, I'm back. You, you know, go. that was an awesome thing. <laughs> so getting back to the whole Pluto and Capricorn, mm -hmm. it stays there until about 2023. How do you see this all unfolding? Well, you know, and I, I, I'm big at going back over when looking at the transit. So we don't have a lot of information on the transit other than the 1760s, 1776. But I've, I've, I've read plenty of books. Pluto's I probably studied outside of Saturn the most. Um, and, and what happens is because it's so slow, uh, I, I always give the analogy in my groups of uh, if you have an uncle come and stay for 23 years or, you know, it's just a transit time of Pluto through a sign um, or stay for two and a half days, which is moon, uh, through a sign, which one would you know more? So uh, we got to know that we're. It's a, this is a 23-year project here, so to speak. I'm sorry, it's only 13 now, but it averages almost 23 years. Um, so it's a 13-year project now, and what we want to do is pace ourselves. And, and we had to get – we wanted to reveal everything we could, which is what we've done in this first third of uh, the time from 09 to now. Next phase is going to be now we got to do something. What's, how are we going to plan against this? And, that, and we're doing pretty well. I'm reading and studying and watching people, and they're all saying, wait a minute, we're not defenseless. We're not flawed. We can do something here. And that's what we're doing, Greg. And then – I'm not saying we can't, you know, uh, get to that phase where we start dominating it, but we got to make sure our plan's in place and that we're covering everything because we don't want to miss anything here with Pluto. So we're going to have three or four years of that of planning, figuring it out, and then we're going to start that next phase of all right, let's start, let's fix this. And I don't think we're going to wait to 2023 because I think with a couple other planets, uh, Uranus is going to go into Taurus in, in three and a half years. I think that's going to help us. We're going to have Saturn and, and uh, Sagittarius and then in, and in uh, Capricorn, and that's going to help us where we can start really uh, changing this. So I'm looking at this fall, th this late summer, this fall, where we're going to start putting that plan together, and we're going to start really revealing and start to bring this thing uh, into the light and bring it down. Um, so I think we're going to start as soon as this year. Um, and then, you know, we just keep making sure we, we have all, all I's dotted and T's crossed, and we're just going to – we're going to overwhelm them in the end, and, and we're going to make what we want. So we've got to figure out what we want that to look like as well in this process of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this evolution. We can't just, hey, let's destroy this. It ain't right, and then not have something to replace it. So half of the battle right now is also what do we want? Let's start defining that. Exactly. I have a video on N5D, uh, the N5D YouTube channel. And it's called The Global Unity Project, What the World Needs Right Now. And it lists everything that's wrong and gives solutions to how we can overcome this. Like, for example, this is just one idea. Um, and we, what we need to do is get rid of all governments and uh, replace them with a council of elders who work in the best interests of humanity. And we can vote on them if we wanted to perhaps every month, every week, and they have to show what they're doing in our best interest. The minute they stop working in our best interest, they're fired. It's not a two-year or a four-year term limit, you know, where we're right. stuck with somebody who promises hope and change and gives us the same crap as the previous person. So, uh, you know, it's just stuff like that that I think mm -hmm. that's where we're heading. And uh, along with uh, tomorrow's article that I'll be, be releasing on N5D, The Future of Education, where Michelle and I propose these uh, radical ideas on how education should be 
uh, taught in, in the new, new, new school system. And I, I think in this educational system, everybody's going to want to uh, be part of it. It's, it's really fun and fascinating. Nice. I, my youngest daughter is in a Montessori school. Mm-hmm. And um, they, uh, the philosophy is based pretty much astrologically. It follows almost in a seven-year cycle. Um, which I think we change every seven years, and uh, that's sat- following the planet Saturn, and they follow pretty close to that. So it's pretty interesting how they do, um, you know, the, the core, the basis of the program follows in a, in a rhythm with the universe, so to speak, or rhythm with nature. Um, and I like that a lot. I mean, there's some things that can be tweaked on it, but I like that. So I'll be interested to read your article and see what, what you all have come up with. So, Excellent. Now, getting back to what you were saying beforehand, Pluto is in retrograde. Uh, well, Pluto is retrograding Capricorn right now. So can you tell yeah. our listeners what that means for us and humanity? And I think you kind of touched on that. Yeah, uh, you know, the retrograde time, we, you know, we've been, things have been revealed. They've been uh, brought up from the depths, and so now they're to the surface, and we're, we're seeing them and having to say, all right, what are we going to do with this now that it's, the ugliness is shown? Retrograde is a time to go, all right. I've seen it. What do I want to do? How do I want to look at this? How do I? How can I fix it? Or how can I, you know, put my energies in there and be most effective without wearing not only myself down but everybody around me? And so that's what we want to do right now. It's not a time that uh, I'm not saying we can't move forward, but I'm telling you, it's a time that we can really address and think and, and consider what's been done and consider what's been revealed and really, you know, work on that plan that I've been talking about. Work on that now. While it's retrograde when it's. When it goes back direct, look to implement or, or you know, put some of the uh, steps forward into, into implementing the plan uh, as we go as we go here. Um, because retrogrades, especially uh, Pluto, you can really sort things out um, because they're slowed down. So you're going to see things maybe that you would have missed in a you know planet moving full force uh, ahead. Mm-hmm. You know, th- th- there's a lot of varying opinions about the beginning of the age of Aquarius. In your opinion, when is it, or are we in it? I, I think we're in the beginning of it now, and I, you know, I know that the it's altered from our perspective. I think we actually move through the universe. I have no problem um, with that concept. I think we've been in it since the late 90s actually and it's such a you know it's 2500 years so we got a while i mean it's not, it's not like we're you know oh, we're going to miss it or we haven't done so I, I think we're in it and i think that the you know the idea and the 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 energies of aquarius are exactly what's needed now and that is a whole new frontier what what's the hopes wishes and dreams what's tomorrow have for us let's think outside the box and let's create a better tomorrow one that we all benefit and not the few benefit one that you know we don't use uh, this you know we don't use someone's energy we don't take somebody's energy we 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 give and receive in an equal amount and i think that's really what i, I think that the aquarian energy is about equality and it's about you know uh, everybody has a uh, say so everybody has um a right and and we allow that um and, and we just we you know we, we make a world that that's that happens and so i think that's you know, we got some, we got plenty of time, but I think we're in the, we're the start of it, and it, it's got to be moved, and that, that needle's got to be moved that direction. Okay, so speaking of which, astrologically speaking, when did or does the Golden Age begin? Is that the same as the Age of Aquarius, or is that, a, according to the Kali Yuga, a different energy? You know, I'm, I'm, Greg, I've read about both, and I think the Golden Age, it, this is my opinion, is with the Age of Aquarius. But I think it comes after we the awakening and the movement starts, and then the golden age happens where um, everything's equal, everything you know is within nature, and you know the understanding, the knowledge is all being able to be tapped into, and life just is, and and you know uh, the, the day uh, happens fluidly, you know, and, and things are just right. So I think that to me, I think the golden age will occur in, in the next twenty, thirty years. Um, well, hopefully, we're still here. But it's after we get through this initial phase of the age of Aquarius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good now, question. I, <laughs> thanks. I read somewhere that Ronald Reagan wouldn't sign anything until he consulted his astrologer. How yeah. do the political elite use astrology daily to manipulate us? Well, you watch um, – I follow the gold and silver markets quite heavily, and, and you watch on – 
days like when the sun transits from one sign to another, um, when maybe you know a, a Mars transits a sign to another, or a planet goes retrograde. These guys are all over astrology because they're doing things when it's action time, and then they're uh, they may reveal things when it's retrograde time. If that makes sense. So they'll do it from a hidden perspective and just reveal. They won't do anything. They'll just reveal something and hidden. And they know that the information will get skewed and screwed up, and nobody will understand it. You know, maybe when there's a retrograde planet. So they are they are so in tune with astrology that it's almost sickening. Um, and and mm-hmm. you know, I'm interested. Jupiter, Jupiter's going into Leo in July. I'm interested to see what these guys do then. Um, you know, with with uh, Jupiter going into Leo, I think it's going to be an interesting time. So. Well, um, I have a question, Jim, and I just wanted to find out if you could maybe give us an idea what the energy might be like for this coming summer, what we can expect, look forward to, you know, good things, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I think one of the best things is everybody's waking up, and this summer, um, the, you know, the, I think the conditions of of – the planet weather-wise, I think, are going to be extreme this summer. Um, Jupiter's in Cancer, and then it's going into Leo. So I think we're going to see some issues there. And because we'll have still have the the uh, T-square, um, the uprisings are going to continue. But as far as on the other side, the good things, uh, great time to launch things this summer. I think Leo, you know, rule in the fifth house in July and, and forward. Everybody needs to grab that Leo energy, Jupiter and Leo. And let's launch ideas. Get your pride, your your how you shine, what you believe. Um, you know that that energy, that Leo energy. Get that out, and let's get ideas out into the open. Let's share them, and then let's together create. I think that's a tremendous opportunity this summer. Also, with the eclipses in in Libra, we can go back eighteen, nineteen years from now. Um, at that last time the eclipses were in Libra, Aries. Uh, I, th- I think it's huge opportunities to partner with people. So I think we have. Tremendous ability uh, to work together if we just all, you know, open uh, to the possibilities. And, you know, I think the walls need to get broken down here. We need to not have obstacles. Uh, And this summer is a good time to let's just break the obstacles and let's work towards a common goal. Um, Let's define it and let's get going. And let bring everybody along with you. I think the huge opportunities are going to be there. Um, And I also think that. I still say that we're, we're going to get some type of life form. Uh, I know we already have it, but it's going to be, you know, where we can't deny it. Some life form or force in late summer should show itself, uh, Uranus and Aries. Um, and so I'm anxious for that, finally. Well, Jim, we're at the end of the show, and I want to thank you for doing a little overtime with, with us. Uh, would you like to tell our listeners how to get in touch with you? Yeah, you can. Uh, I do videos on YouTube, of course, Panther Jim 1995. You can go there. Um, I'm a huge Carolina Panther fan, and uh, that's how I got that. That was the year they were formed, so that'll help you to remember my name, hopefully. And then you can get me at ypie2012.com. It's your potential is exponential, ypie2012.com. You can get me there. Um, I, you know, I hope everybody continues on uh, this path that we're on because I think it's the, the tide has turned and the awakening has happened. I, Greg, I think you're a special guy. I think you put so much out there that's just it's just right, and I hope you never stop because it's that's the, where the difference is right there. Somebody putting it out, not caring where it goes or how far it goes, but just keep putting it out there because you know that within you it's, that that's right, and so that's what we need. Um, and Sherry, I'm looking to uh, I'm going to follow and see what's going on with you and your daughter. I'm, I uh, make to see what happens there. I. I, uh, you know, you got great energy, and I'm sure your daughter does. So, you're all doing the right stuff, and it would just keep it up. So, thank oh, you. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to meet you. And and I'm actually a North Carolina fan too because I lived in Raleigh for three years. So I'm oh, a nice, Panther fan nice. too. Yo yo. <laughs> Well, thank I'll you. tell you what, these, these two hours, once again, Jim, just flew by as quickly as ever, and it would be great to bring you back again in the near future. I'd love to, Greg. You're, you just, I, I just get, I'm energized when I hang up, and I love that. So I, I do it whenever you need, so holler at me. So, and I, I, can't thank I appreciate you enough for, that. I can't thank you enough for thinking of me and allowing me on. So, Sherry, uh, Greg, I appreciate everything. Our pleasure. Thank you so much. And we're looking forward to bringing you back again soon. Also, I want to remind everyone, too, that you can also find Jim's videos. As soon as he releases them, I put them on 
uh, Inside D Alternative News, and I also post them on the Inside D Facebook page as well as my own personal Facebook page for Greg Prescott. So once again, Jim, thanks for all you've done for us. And thank you as well. I, I had a great time, and keep keep it up. Love it. All right, brother. Good night, Take care everybody. Now. Bye-bye. Take care. All right. Good night. Bye. So next week, Sherry and I are going to be talking about the seven ways our children are being brainwashed on N5D Radio. So be sure to tune in next Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and midnight in the U.K. Um, also, I, I did want to remind everybody about our other shows on N5D Radio. We have a whole slew of shows from Monday through hopefully this upcoming Friday with Sherry's uh, daughter. For those who are new to N5D Radio, I'd just like to remind everyone that on, obviously, Monday nights, we have the N5D radio show. As you know, Sherry and I host N5D, so be sure to tune into that. On Tuesday evening, certified hypnotist and Reiki healer C.J. Miller hosts the C.J. Miller show at 8 p.m. Eastern. And on Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, Helene Lipson, who's a psychic astrologer, brings you an amazing combination of guests and astrological readings. And finally, on Thursday evening... One of our N5D writers, Michelle Walling, and her co-host, Larry Locken, hosts the Cosmic Awakening Show at 8 p.m. Eastern. And as we mentioned, we're hoping that Jessica Sanchez, Sherry's daughter, will be having her show on Friday night. So definitely tune in to the latest news on that. Is she pretty pumped up for that, Sherry? You know what? She's super excited because she's just... Um you know, that kid, she's she's pumping it out. She's got her go on, and she's working her Instagram. She's working her blog. She has two jobs, and she's she's just trying to change this world. She's saying, if, if other people aren't going to do it, I'm going to do it 100 times as hard and work it. And so I say, you go, girl. You know, so, yeah, no, she's super excited for it. And uh, and honestly, I think she'll have a wonderful time. She's a, just a wonderful, sweet, good kid. I think people will love her. She's a, a beautiful energy, strong character, very super, super kind, kind-hearted, loving, good kid. And so I, I, I would love to see her do this. Me too, and I couldn't agree more. She's going to do an amazing job if this is something that she wants to do. And we'll get her all lined up uh, to do that. Oh. So, uh huh. Indeed. So we're going to wrap it up. So on behalf of my co-host Sherry, this is Greg from N5D.com. Namaste, everyone. Thank you. Bye.